Hi, everyone. Welcome into our Chicago studios. I'm Dave Revson. We're going to take you out to Lincoln, Nebraska momentarily. Really big day for the Huskers as they are set to introduce Troy Dannon as their new AD, taking over for Trev Alberts, who somewhat surprisingly left for Texas A&M a couple weeks ago. Dannon comes with a fabulous track record. He is a Midwest native, grew up in the state of Iowa, went to Northern Iowa, was the AD there. One of three schools that he has been the athletic director at. His longest run was at Tulane, eight years there, leading the Green Wave, had some incredible success, made their way to the New Year's Six, beat USC in the Cotton Bowl. He was briefly the AD at Washington before taking the job at Nebraska. Let's head out to Lincoln and listen in as Troy Dannon is introduced. Um, my name is Chris Kaboric. I have the extreme honor and privilege as serving as the interim president for the University of Nebraska system. And what a great, great day we are here to introduce Troy Dan and his family uh, to Nebraska. I first want to say a few words of thanks to some really important people um, in the room. First of all, I want to thank all of our members of the Husker Athletic Department, our coaches, our staff, our student athletes, all of you, our friends and supporters. Days like this, it truly takes a village. And being a lifelong Nebraskan, I couldn't have done this without all of you. So sincerely, thank you for your support, uh, for all the things you do for Husker Athletics. Um, I need to thank my family, my wife, Jamie, my three boys, Aiden, Sam, and Charlie. Um, I've learned when you go through a search like this, you got to give it all of your time and effort. And uh, I essentially went into the bunker for several days and did not uh, come out until we got this done. So uh, I miss some baseball games, miss some family time. And so, but you can't do this kind of job without a supportive family. So Jamie, Aiden, Sam, uh, Charlie, I love you and thank you for letting me do what I love to do. When you do a search like this, you have to have a very um, close knit of people in your foxhole that you can trust and lean on and get counsel and advice. So I want to thank uh, the Tiger team of people who gave me advice and input. That includes Chairman of the Board, Rob Schaefer, Governor Pillen, Jamie Vaughn, our Husker Athletic Director of Compliance, and Coach Rule. They took my calls any time of the day, night, middle of the night, and I couldn't have done it uh, without each and every one of them. Finally, I want to thank someone who I didn't know really well until I got into this unique situation. Um, but this person has been a voice of calm, steady, capable leadership throughout this whirlwind in our, in our latest chapter of Husker history. Someone who, when we asked him to serve, did not hesitate to step up. Someone who didn't want the spotlight, only wanted to support our student athletes, our coaches, and our staff through this transition. So please help me and join a big round of applause for Dennis LeBlanc and all that he did. March 13th, quite a day. Most of you know me, I'm a lifelong Nebraskan. Uh, I bleed Husker red. And I was as shocked as anybody in Husker Nation when Trev called me to give me the news he was moving on to Texas A&M. I sincerely appreciate all that Trev did. He made this place better. And I wish nothing but for him and Amy to have success in their new journey. But my team at Varner Hall, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a youth coach, I'm a referee, and my team hears me say this all the time. We can only control what we can control. It wasn't a time to look in the rearview mirror, but to look forward on the path before us. So I gave myself about an hour to digest the news after I talked to Trev, and then I only did what I know Nebraskans do. I rolled up my sleeves and I got to work. And I know you've read a lot about different leadership searches going on at the University of Nebraska. 
And I think it's really easy to conflate one with the other, but each and every search follows its own process. Whether it's a president, which takes a very long time, it's like a marathon, almost like the Daytona 500, when maybe you tune in just to watch the crashes or the last three laps. But what I learned about the athletic industry, it's a sprint. Not only a 40 yard dash sprint, but maybe a 10 yard dash sprint. Top fuel funny card, green light and go. And so I knew we had to move fast, very, very fast. I knew we couldn't stand still. And it's thanks to the people, our staff, our coaches, our student athletes. There is so much momentum going on in this athletic department in this state. It was no time to hit the pause button. We're doing great things from our basketball program that just gave us an exhilarating March Madness run to the amazing start our baseball, softball teams are off to. I don't need to explain what our women's soccer program did or the volleyball program did last fall. And I know what Coach Rule is gonna do for our program, football program going forward. Not to manage what Dennis and everybody in the athletic department did for our student athletes and the success in the classroom. I may be in the interim role, but I am fortunate that the Board of Regents entrusted me with the full authority as the president to move quickly and be decisive on this athletic director search. And that's a good thing. Because when we have momentum and we have success and a leadership transition happens, guess what? People like Amy and Fred and our student athletes get calls about other opportunities at other institutions. So I'm very grateful for the Board of Regents and their support in Dennis and myself to be decisive in building the right team going forward. And I knew right away, I had a list of things I knew I was looking for in our, new, in our, in our next athletic director. Someone that had Nebraska work ethic. Someone who was smart, strategic, who was aligned with our vision for excellence across the institution. Someone who wouldn't need a lot of hand-holding or onboarding, who could get right in the room with Big Ten and NCAA leaders and be a leading voice in these conversations about the changing, changing landscape in college athletics. Someone with football experience, football chops, who could be a great partner to Coach Rule as we bring Husker football back to national prominence. Someone who would fight for our student athletes and our coaches. And maybe most important, someone who wants to be on Team Nebraska. Someone that sees what we have going on here and wants to be a part of it. Who recognizes that Nebraska is a special, special place with special people. Who understands what a privilege and a responsibility it is to wear the red N. And it's going to represent the University of Nebraska with pride, integrity, and competitiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, in Troy Dannon, we found that person. As I said last week, I was overwhelmed with, by the interest we got from across the country in our position. That affirmed to me that Nebraska is on the map. Nebraska is a power player. And I took many, many opportunities for phone calls. But over and over again, Troy came to the top of my list. Troy is someone with deep Midwest ties, with football chops, who wants to compete and win in all facets. When we spoke, I saw right away Nebraska would be a good fit for him and his family and vice versa. He grew up on a farm. He knows how to work hard. He's a fighter. He's worked at institutions with less resources. He brought academic excellence up and how our vision to get back in the AAU resonated with him. He has Big Ten experience and is deeply engaged in the complex issues in Division I athletics. I'm a big destiny person. Sometimes the stars just simply align for you. And I saw that with Troy. And in searches like these, when you see that, when you sense that you're getting the green light, when you sense that you have the right person and that they're movable, you gotta put the hammer down and go for it. And that's what we did. 
So about four in the morning last Wednesday, um, Troy and I reached a deal, and I knew it was sealed in my mind that we had the right person, because I asked Troy, when do you want to start? And he's like, what are you talking about? I'm starting today. I'm going to go to football practice. Get me to Lincoln. I'm going to go to football practice. Then I want to be in Memphis to support Fred and the men. And then I want to come back and watch the softball and baseball games on Saturday. And then we're going to go to Corvallis and root on the women's team. And it's exactly what he did. That's the kind of work ethic I know Nebraskans are going to embrace. So Troy, Amy, Ellie, and William, we're going to bring you up here in a few minutes. But we're so glad that you're here. And we can't wait to see what you're going to do for the University of Nebraska. This is the start of a great chapter in Husker Athletics. But before we do that, I want to invite a couple of people up to make some uh, welcoming remarks. So first, on behalf of the Board of Regents, please let me introduce Chairman Rob Schaefer from Beatrice. Good afternoon, and thank you for uh, sharing the podium, Chris. It's an honor. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to Troy and Amy and their family. Thank you for becoming Huskers. Just looking at you makes, reminds me of looking at a picture of Bob Devaney. So let's hope you, you turn, out to, turn out great things like uh, Coach Devaney did. So I know uh, Governor Pillen knew Coach Devaney. I never had that, that privilege, but uh, wow. What a, what a great day for, for all Nebraska and, and Huskers. I'd like to just say uh, that at the Board of Regents, we have complete confidence in uh, President Kaborik and his selection of Troy, and that we know that uh, under Troy's leadership, Husker Athletics are going to be in, in, in great hands and going, going to go out and accomplish great things. As chairman, I could not be more pleased with the effort and the speed and the manner in which President Kaborik conducted this search. Um, let's give another round of applause to, to President Kaborik. You know, and just this last week, uh, I've been asked uh, whether we as a board felt comfortable empowering an interim president with a search of this magnitude. And I will tell you, my response to that is astoundingly 100% yes, absolutely. Chris, again, did a, did a fantastic job, and we had complete confidence in his abilities. <clears throat> so again, thank you. A little bit more about Chris. You know, he's a passionate person, and he's even more passionate about the Huskers and his family. Uh, he's been involved in, in athletics, you know, himself as a competitor growing up, and still today as a, as a referee for, for high school and college sports. He knows exactly the kind of leadership and qualities that we need in Husker Athletics, and he found it here today in Troy. So when our AD, came, uh, our AD job came open, we knew that uh, in President Kaborik's hands that he was going to make a sound decision and a lasting decision that was going to affect Nebraskans and our athletic teams for hopefully generations to come. We want you here, and we want you here for the long haul. So with that, I'd have to say that Chris did an outstanding job. We're so excited to have Troy Dannon and his family here and to be the leaders now of Husker Nation. And Chris, we'd just like to thank you again one more time for all the hard work you put into this. And just like to extend a thank you also then to all our coaches and staff and the friends of Husker Nation, uh, to Governor Pillen, the members of the Board of Regents, and just the coaches and players and everybody who makes this thing work, because it, uh, it really is not a one-man show on anything we do in Nebraska. It's a team effort, a collective effort, and what we've all found out is it, it takes all of us on board if we're going to go out and accomplish great things. So uh, with that, I would say not only go Big Red, but go be great. Thank you. Thank you, Regent Schaefer. Um, you know, as I went through the search, um, I leaned on a couple of close individuals, and I leaned on this individual quite closely. He and I have, he's a mentor to me, a friend, um, but he's a Husker legend. He's, he's bled, he's sweat, shed tears on that field out there. 
He's an alum. He's a successful businessman. I've had an opportunity in a lifetime to work over a decade with him as a member of the Board of Regents, and now he he's an honor to call him the governor of this great state of Nebraska. So, Governor Jim Pillen, on behalf of all Nebraskans, please come up and, and say a few remarks. Well, the first thing I'll say is I'm guilty. I love this place. I love the people of the incredible state of Nebraska. I've asked this question a gazillion times, you guys, in the last three years since this calling happened to me. What's the one thing you love the most about Nebraska? Us lifetimers, we kind of get flustered. We look down, we kick the dirt. We don't know what to say. Anybody that moves to Nebraska, I say, what do you love the most about Nebraska? Can't get it out fast enough. It's the people. The people in Nebraska are so extraordinary, just extraordinary. And that I think you will find really, really quickly before you even get, get the dishes unpacked. The people in Nebraska just have so much love in their heart, full of grace. And uh, here's the thing you can count about on and bet the farm on every single day about Nebraskans. Whenever there's a need, whenever there's a need for help, whenever, whatever their need there is, Nebraskans are there 100% of the time. I don't know about all of you, but my heart's pounding. I get so pumped up when we talk about our program. Any of us that have had the privilege, this program is everything. Coach Osborne taught us that uh, no matter who's in charge, that's who you support because it's our program. And you support our program. There's tons here. We support our program no matter what, no matter what. And so um, here's, I think, the thing uh, that, uh, you know, I could brag about memories. I can tell you exactly where I was when I was nine years old and the first time I got to come to a football game, as most Nebraskans have that memory. Uh, because the thing that's so important about Nebraska athletics, Nebraska football, is it pulls us all together. We can all come together in all kinds of weather, no matter what the circumstances are. And I think that, <clears throat> lastly, what I have extraordinary, extraordinary confidence, uh, Troy, with your leadership, is that every single student athlete at the University of Nebraska will fully, fully have the gift of belief that they can win any game they get into. They have the belief that they can compete with anybody, anytime, anywhere, any place. Um, and that's simply because of leadership and the great people in Nebraska, the extraordinary fans that support this place and make this place uh, one of the greatest programs in the history of intercollegiate athletics. So welcome to Nebraska. Uh, really, really excited for you and your family. Uh, and uh, Chris, can't congratulate you enough on uh, the work you've, you've done. Nebraska's proud. Uh, go Big Red. Thank you, Governor Pillen. Uh, we really appreciate all the work you can do. And as you can imagine, no better cheerleader um, to say all the great things about Nebraska. So with that, William, Ailey, Ellie, Amy, and Troy, if you might come on up and join me. Troy, I'm gonna, I'm gonna admit this, it almost, feels, um, it almost feels silly to be introducing you after you've hit the ground running over the past week and uh, put a, in a full week of work on us. You know, he actually worked, I think, for a day or two for free, so thank you, I appreciate that at the CFO. But on behalf of all of Husker Nation, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you as the 17th Athletic Director at the University of Nebraska. Please give me a big round of applause and welcome Troy Dan and his family to Nebraska. Go Big Red.
Okay, I just learned we have a clear bag policy at the stadium, my wife is set. Uh, wow, how's your week? Mine's been uh, something else, uh, but it's been the best week of my professional life, and, and I think it's going to lead to the best times of my personal life. Thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, President Kabork, thank you. Uh, the trust and the confidence uh, that you placed in me and my family to come here and you know, I know what this place is, and, and to think that I can stand here and be a part of it in this role, uh, it's an opportunity of a lifetime for all of us, everyone in my family. Uh, I will clarify, though, uh, President Bork made one mistake. He said it was about 4 a.m. It was 3.51 a.m. when we actually executed. I, I knew I was going to come work for the right guy. Because at 2 o'clock, he, he figured out how to execute a DocuSign agreement uh, from someplace in his house. And, and we got that thing done, signed at 3.51. So 3.51 is like our time now. So if your phone ever rings at 3.51, I expect you to answer it because it's just kind of our time. But uh, uh, I really appreciate you. And, and uh, it did go fast forward. It was something else. And, and it'll be a story I'll tell for the rest of my life. Uh, uh, Chairman Schaefer, I uh, appreciate you being here, and, and I want you to know, you know, I'll, I'll work on behalf of this athletic department day in, day out, but I'll work with the regions on behalf of this university, on behalf of this state. Uh, I look forward to being a part of, of everything, not just the athletic department that, that this job brings. Thank you. Uh, Governor Pillen, uh, and we had a great call during this search process, and, and uh, I, I think what the governor did just like he did today, was affirmed for me why this job and this place was going to mean so much. You know, every place, it is, everything is about people. Everything is about relationships. And, and I thought I knew. And then when I got off the phone with the governor, I was like, yeah, that's it. He, he sold me. Now, he didn't really have to sell me because I think I was sold already. But he did affirm for me everything about this state, and it's about its people. And it is going to be a great honor and a great privilege to live and work in the state of Nebraska, Governor. Thank you very much. Uh, my time at Washington was certainly shorter than I expected it to be when I went there. I do want to thank President Kause, uh for giving me the opportunity uh, and all the support that everyone at Washington gave me. Uh, I wish nothing, nothing but the best for everyone at Washington uh, and, and appreciate what they did for me. A lot of supporters here, uh, a lot of alums, coaches, staff, uh, student athletes. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to be here. You know, I, I can't, cannot even begin to express how much and how uh, I'm looking forward to working alongside you. But I also want to spend a minute on Dennis. Uh, uh, you know, it's his leadership, not just in the last few days, but his leadership here for four decades. Uh, I've known the man now for six whole days. He's been a great, great uh, help for me in, in starting to understand the lay of the land. Uh, and, and his tenure, by the way, he signed two extensions with two basketball coaches. So when you have a one-week tenure and you extend two basketball coaches, it, it is not interim. As we don't have an interim president, we don't have an interim athletic director. So Dennis, thank you so much for everything that you did along the way. Uh, most importantly, and I will not look at them right now, uh, I will thank my family because I, I will have a tendency to get emotional, and I will get emotional about my family. You met Amy and William and, and uh, Ellie, uh, but my older daughters, uh, Emily and Holly, who aren't here, uh, and then Amy's sister, Krista, who is here six and some odd months pregnant, uh, seven, seven and some odd, I don't know, you're pregnant. <laughs> Uh, uh, her husband, Tony, uh, they live in Des Moines, the fact that they can be here today. But, um, uh, you know, this career, this job, all of us who work in college athletics, it's got its ups and it's got its downs. It is not easy to live with someone who goes through the emotions of, of what this brings. And so, number one, uh, I, I appreciate her being able to live with me uh, d during these times. But, you know, this school year, I've taken them on a particularly wild emotional ride. Uh, things that I, I'm not sure normally happen to anybody. Uh, but uh, they've just been, uh, I, I have a rock star of a wife. I have uh, uh, amazing kids, and we have superstars around us. So I, I love you dearly. And uh, time to take a drink. <laughs> but I really appreciate uh, you letting me do this, uh, and, and particularly uh, coming here, so that we can all be together here in, in Nebraska. Uh, that said, one of the best hires I've made in my career. 
that you've never heard of is a guy by the name of Tyler Kai who's sitting down here. Now, I'm going to tell you a story about Tyler. Tyler, uh, Tyler is a Nebraska native as a baby, right? But you left, you grew up in Iowa. I hired him from Tennessee, like in the, in the infancy of his career at Tulane. He was there for two, two years, and from, he went from here to running the whole advancement and development operation for us. And about three years ago, uh, he had a, got, a, got a call to come to Nebraska. And, and uh, he reminded me this week uh, of what I said to him when he came to my office to talk about the job. I said, you know, if Nebraska calls, you have to take the job. And so we left. And, and uh, uh, I gave him that advice, and, and I realized, uh, as I was thinking about this job when I first got the call, uh, why I gave him the advice. Because when I was my son's age, Nebraska was the center of the universe of college football. We were winning national championships. I still hear Keith Jackson's voice calling these games, the reverence that he had for this university and this program. And I admired it. I wanted to be a part of it. Uh, and, and, you know, when I was nine, I thought I was going to be a part of it. And I quickly realized genetically I had no chance to be a part of it in the way that I wanted to be a part of it. I'll give you a little bit of background on my athletic career. I was, uh, I was the backup kicker. Uh, I was also the backup holder. When it came time for a pinch runner in the last inning of the game and everybody else had played, that was my time. I was the 15th kid on a 13-man basketball roster, and if there had been a javelin catching position, that's where they would have put me. <laughs> so it was not going to come on the field. My role or my path to getting involved in this was going to come off the field. I, I, when I went to Northern Iowa, Bob Bowlesby was the athletic director, a legend in athletics. And he became my mentor to this day. He is the one guy I called, the one guy I called when this search came about. And when I laid everything out and he said, are you crazy? Take that job. And that's what I wanted to hear. Just my mentor affirming what, what my own mind told me. And then we bonded a little bit over officiating because I also officiated. Uh, I officiated because I was coaching a group of sixth graders when I was in 12th grade and I got a technical foul and my principal was so offended by me. He said, by golly, you're going to officiate. You're going to learn that you're going to have to respect those officials. So I started to officiate. You know, Fred, a lot's been said about I hope he's a better athletic director than he was official. I just want to remind everyone, Fred is unbeaten in games that I have officiated. So I was, I was pretty doggone good. I'll see, I'll see if I can't work the Big Ten Championship game next year. Uh, but all that a different path, but all that led me back to the center of the universe, which is Nebraska athletics. It's a crazy, circuitous route, but it led me back here, and I'm so thrilled that it did. It was, uh, Chris mentioned there's so much momentum here right now, uh, so much history, I mean, great coaches. The facilities are indescribable, uh, our student athletes, the, the passion in the fans, and, and, and I call that passion, Governor, a give a darn factor. I might use a different word for it from time to time but give it darn factor. Nothing beats a high give it darn factor. And that give it darn factor exists here, every place throughout the state, throughout the university, throughout the department. I love being a part of a great give it darn factor. But if you wanna have a culture of success, those are the ingredients that will allow you to have six, uh, success. I've been particularly pleased and, and probably what I did my most diligence on from the time I got the call was about the alignment of the university. You know, alignment's about common goals, common interests, common belief, common motivation. Alignment is about the willingness of everybody to get stuff out of the way to allow the whole to succeed. Alignment's not about decisions, and it's not about, uh, uh, it's not about necessarily the people all being this, that, in the, in the order that they are. Alignment comes from the governor, it comes from the board, it comes from the president, it comes from the chancellor, it comes from our faculty, it comes from the student athletes, it comes from a coach. Alignment is up and down. Is everybody willing to move mountains to put people in a position to succeed? That's alignment. And the alignment here is as good as anything I've ever seen any place. This is 17 years for me as an athletic director. I know the places I've been, I know the places I've been around. Trust me, the alignment is here to allow success. So that recipe, in order for us to make that recipe, execute that recipe for success, alignment with all those things in place, we've got it all here.
And that's why this job, it wasn't just about coming home. It was about coming home and winning. It was about coming home and seeing great things happen. I wasn't going to come home just for the sake of coming home. I was in my office for about five minutes on Thursday before we went to Memphis. I called Coach Osborne. One, it was a big moment for me because, you know, as I grew up watching this, it was Coach Osborne. It's not just how he won. It was how he perceived he won and what I understood, how he built this thing and the way he did it. And, and I called him because page one, paragraph one of the How to Be an Athletic Director handbook is do no harm. And one of the most important things for me is to understand the culture, understand how we got here. And, and I'll sit down face to face with coach as soon as we can get calendar. Hopefully yeah, that's yet this week. I want to understand the history. I want to understand the culture. And I want to understand the philosophy of how we built what we built here. Over the next few weeks, I'm going to sit down with coaches, staff, uh, our student athletes. And I want to learn what they think makes us special. If you ask my priority from day one, it's listening and learning. Now, I've had the greatest start to an athletic director tenure that anyone could ever have. I got to travel to Memphis. I got to be around, and I mean thousands, of Husker fans. It was incredible. I don't know how many hands I shook and I don't know how many voices I heard, but I heard a lot and I talked to a lot of people. I've got a really good head start on what the culture is here and what everybody wants and expects out of this place. Uh, I can promise you this, Nebraska will lead. We will not follow, we will lead. We'll look around the corners. Uh, we will embrace whatever's there, even if we don't like it. That's how you lead. You embrace what's there and off we go. Uh, the relationship our student athletes have with the university is going to continue to change and evolve. Uh, we can speculate what it looks like, but know this. If you think the last five years in college athletics have been wild, the next five years are going to put it to shame. Uh, we, there was a lot happening, and I don't think any of us know exactly what's going to happen. Nebraska, though, remember this. Nebraska became one of the greatest brands in college sports for one reason because we won. And you know how we won? We won because in 69, Devaney hired a strength coach when nobody knew strength coaches were ever gonna be important. It's because we took initiatives with our student athletes time and time again to elevate them and put them in a position to succeed. Our student athletes, this is a great place. We do things for them that nobody else is doing. We are a national leader. But today, it's more than strength. It's more than nutrition. It's more than even the degree. It's more than facilities. It's more than giving a laptop when they come. It's more than, hey, we're going to prepare you for sex, success throughout your life. Success now is about innovation in NIL. It's innovation in how we embrace the role of the student athlete inside of our athletic department. Uh, uh, success is about our collective. You're going to see me wearing 1890 stuff as much as I wear Nebraska stuff because it's about this. Recruitment and retention of our student athletes, number one. Five years ago, nobody would have stood up here and told you that. But today, number one. And how we do that is going to change over the years. But I've said this about Coach Rule. When Coach Rule was hired, I thought that is the greatest coach. I've known Matt for quite a while. That is the greatest coach at the right time, at the right place. He will win big here. Great job of recruitment. I just saw two coaches who went to the NCAA tournament, Amy and Fred, who are great coaches. And I've known Fred forever, and I followed Amy. I once thought I was going to hire her when she was at Rogers State. But we just retained them because you don't let good people get away. Same thing goes for student athletes. Recruitment and retention, that is our priority. And you will see that for me over and over and over again. Uh, when you invest in student athletes, uh, the investment pays off in, in ways that we'll never understand, both for the whole, for the collective, but certainly for the student athletes. And you will hear me over and over again ask you to invest in our student athletes. Now, I have a lot of goals, and I'm not going to tell you all of them, but I'm going to tell you I have one expectation that I will be unyielding upon. And that is this, Nebraska Cornhusker Athletics will be the standard by which everyone else will measure themselves. And it doesn't matter what job we have in the department, my staff will hear me say this, it doesn't matter. If you sell tickets, you sell tickets in a way that everybody that sells tickets in the country should look and say, that's how you sell tickets. If you teach strength, 
then you're going to do it in such a way that everybody can say, this is how strength should be taught. This is how academic support should be done. This is how this, this is how we should cope, but we will set the standard in everything we do. Ultimately, though, uh, I will say this. Ultimately, I don't need to talk to anybody. I don't need to talk to the coaches. I don't need to talk to Co Coach Osborne. Ultimately, I know this. We're going to win. We're going to win, and we're going to win, and we're, and we're going to win Big Ten championships, and we're going to win national championships, and we are going to win academically, and we are going to win socially, and we are going to win with character, and we are going to win with integrity. And at the end of the day, the greatest win of all that we will have here is our student athletes will walk out of here and they will win for the next 40 years of their life because of the experience they get at the University of Nebraska. That is our priority. That is our mission. Sometimes that mission gets lost because of all the other stuff we're talking about. But we will recruit, we will retain, and we will send everyone out of here a winner because that's what the University of Nebraska is. This is the greatest time at the greatest of places I will tell you, I am thrilled. My family is thrilled. This is a great honor to be here. Go Big Red. So Troy Dannon taking over at Nebraska, takes over an athletic program that is in really good shape. Of course, the volleyball program has been a perennial power, but you look at what the basketball team did making it to the Big Ten dance for the first time in a decade women's hoops winning attorney game you had a women's soccer program one win away from making the final four obviously the the challenge moving forward is can he get football to where they want to be but feeling really good around Matt rule so that's the story in Lincoln thanks so much for joining us here on the Big Ten Network again a big day in Nebraska Troy Dannon the new athletic director for the Huskers.